Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's look is such an exciting one. I absolutely love how it turned out and now I feel like I'm too bright. I hope I'm not. Sorry if I am. But yeah, it's a date night makeup look. So I've done like a smoky liner, like cut crease look for you guys. I kept it pretty simple. It's not too hard to achieve and I used really natural wispy lashes. This is a full face makeup look for you guys, which I just realized I didn't set my face. But anyways. Continuing on, um, I did a full face for you guys today just because I haven't done one in such a long time. I have a few products that I want to continue trying out and using their new so they're not the same old, same old that you guys see in all my other tutorials. I wanted to jazz it up a little bit, you know, keep it different, keep it fun, keep it new. Otherwise, just seeing the same things all the time, it gets boring. Um, but yeah, I love how this eye and lip look look like look turned out. I really hope you guys enjoy it too. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and comment down below what you thought, any requests that you have in the future and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on that little notification button so you guys can stay updated with all my latest videos and tutorials. Otherwise guys, enjoy the video and I'll see you very soon. Okay guys, so to start off the face, I'm going to initially do the skin I think before I do the eyes today just because it's going to be like not too much fallout, I would say. I do want to kind of get my skin going because I do have a few breakouts on it today and I just want to cover those up. So, yeah, to prime my skin, I'm going to go in with a couple things today. I'm first of all going to take my Scandinavia Primer Spray and this is in the oil control one. So I find this so helpful to keep my oils at bay and stop the oils seeping through my foundation. And just fanning it in helps activate it. Like I said, I am quite an oily combination skin girl, so I find like the longer I wear my makeup, the more obvious it is that, like as my oils start to seep through and I look kind of greasy. So I like to kind of use like a oil control priming technique to stop those oils like seeping through into my foundation. So next I'm going to go in with a mattifying primer. I like to use the 100% pure mattifying primer infused with lots of vitamins and antioxidants just because it is good for the skin. So I'm actually going to be benefiting my skin as I'm wearing this. And I focus this more so on the center of my face and just kind of work out. And next I'm actually going to go in with concealer before I go in with my foundation. I just want to kind of use a bit more coverage on the breakouts that I have on my face and I feel like using concealer first just recently I've been doing this and I find it just works a little better you know now I'm tossing up between using my raw one or my handy dandy like age rewind I have a few things I don't like about this concealer like I wore it the other day under my eyes and because I was like laughing so much my eyes like start to water up when I laugh and it just smudged like it totally just like smudged the eye concealer it just totally disappeared on me it just came off I was like oh, super unhappy with it but it works well on the face like and when I say well like it still goes patchy and like clings to it so I'm gonna try using it first I haven't actually done a, like a first apply to the skin and then the foundation on top yet I've only done that with my age rewind concealer so I'll give that a try and see how it goes but I'm not that happy with this concealer like I don't regularly recommend the raw concealer the foundation is great the concealer is not so I've been picking at my pimples hence why they're just so fiery and red I'm just using my finger and just kind of giving a bit of extra coverage to them and applying it first also allows my foundation to darken them up afterwards like because it is quite like the concealer is a little bit lighter than my skin tone um, it just stands out, makes them stand out a bit more, which is not what I'm going for, so I just find applying concealer first, especially if it's lighter in colour on the face, like it just works better. So I haven't done one of these like um, date night makeup looks in a little while, and I'm actually so excited to do it, I haven't done it in so long, and I just, I usually like to keep it more on the natural side if I'm to do like a date night sort of makeup look. I'm not really about that full glam life when it comes to like the first few dates. I just like to enhance the more natural beauty and everything. I know some of you guys really love like the full glam and that's totally up to you. Like you guys do you. I really don't think there's any right or wrong. It's all about you really enhancing you. 
I just like to enhance more natural features. I've got a bit of redness here too, so I'm just concealing that. The foundation isn't that full coverage. I'm going in with the raw one. But I just like to give it a little bit of coverage where I feel is needed. And just wear that more natural foundation. Because I don't like something thick and heavy on my face. Especially for like, you know, a few hours or so. I just find it very uncomfortable. Unless I'm doing like a like clubbing night or something. Like, I usually don't. See, look, it's like coming all crusty. I really don't like this concealer. Like I might just like, I only use it because it's natural. I want something that's good, not something like that shit and just goes all crusty. Like, let me just show you guys. Like, just on my breakouts because my breakouts are dry because I use tea tree oil to kind of like, you know, get rid of all the bacteria, like kill them kind of thing. And it's just gone all crusty. We're off to a great start. Oh, at least it's like ugh, underneath so I can try and fix it with the foundation. Anywho, before I like, like before I go in with my foundation, I'm going to go with a smidge and just a touch of a translucent powder. This one is the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I just like to use this to kind of like in my T zone to just like kind of use as like an extra barrier against my oils. So all I really do is just grab a fluffy brush. This is just a contour face brush. I just tap off the excess and just go to town on my t-zone area around my nose. I literally just use whatever's on the brush. Like I don't want a lot. I always start on my forehead because that's where I get the most oiliness. Start from the center of the face and just work out and that's it. That's all the powder that I use. For foundation today, like I said, I'm going to take my raw superfood infused beauty wildberry nourish foundation. This is in the shade Honey, and I'm just going to apply this on top. I like a light little wash of foundation, like I said. I'm not looking for anything full coverage. I kind of want to be my more natural self. I always like the eyeshadow part of any look because I find like that just, that's where I get to be creative and really show my inner self. Like, when I, mean, I did have really bad skin, I used to do quite full coverage looks because, like I said, I didn't want to have my acne poking through. But now my skin's um, cleared up so much and it's a lot better. I prefer to sh kind of flaunt that and show my more natural skin so I won't you know, be covering up all my freckles or like blemishes or imperfections. I kind of like having a little bit of that poking through, like to a certain extent. Like, I try and hide my breakouts and pimples and things, but like, not as much as I used to, kind of like flaunt the imperfections kind of thing. I mean, after all, they make us us, don't they? So I'm just going in with my Kabuki brush, and I spot the foundation around my face so it's more of an even coverage, rather than just taking it from my hand and it just plonking it on, like, I prefer to kind of spread it out a little bit. It is a little bit darker for me, so I do try and bring it down my neck a little bit and down onto the body a bit. Like, my body is definitely darker than my face. I try not to have my face exposed to the sun as much, so it doesn't get as much tanning, if you will. See, so that concealer's just, like, washed off. I give up. I'm going to go in with my Maybelline one. My Maybelline um, concealer. I'm doing that under the eyes anyways, like I don't really wear, ever since it just died on me like the other day when I was wearing the concealer under my eyes. So taking just like half a pump again, I don't want a full pump, I think that will be too much, I'll be too dark. I'm just going to take half a pump, like I said in my review, I, um, I'll link my review up for you guys to check out about this foundation concealer and powder, I mean you're getting the second review really, but um, yeah my first impression I'll link up above. And into the, into the in the description bar. Um, but yeah, I did get a shade darker when I purchased this because I was super tan from coming back from my holiday up at the coast. So it's not like it doesn't match me like at all. Like it matches me pretty well. It's probably just like I'd say like a shade too dark, which isn't bad. I just lighten up with my lighter concealer. So for my concealer, I'm going to go in with my Instant Age Rewind Concealer and just. Go to town, prime my lids with that as well. Bring it down my face in a triangle around my nose where I get any redness. Highlight the center of my face. You know, all that kind of jazz. I also like to sculpt out my cheekbones, which works out well because there's a pimple right there that I just keep needing to like top up. Just won't 
cover up that can like nothing's covering up that pimple there. But yeah, I just sculpt out my cheekbones a little bit, just subtly. And then I just blend it out with my F80 Kabuki brush from Sigma. So before we go in with like bronzer and all that jazz, I want to just use the creams first. Like cream products just look so good on the skin. So good and so natural. So I'm going to take my Master Glaze Blush Stick. It's a cream blush and it's in the shade Coral Sheen. So it's a nice warm flush to the cheeks. And I'm literally just going to use my finger, just kind of swirl it around, tap off any excess on the back of my hand because it is super pigmented. And I'm just going to apply that to like the more cheekbone, cheek area of my face. So I'll start here on the cheekbones, Ooh, a bit much. Ooh. And then I work the rest of the product onto the apples of my face. Next, I like to go in with my liquid glow. This is the Master Strobing Liquid from Maybelline, and it's in the shade Light Iridescent. I wish I got the next shade up because I think Light Iridescent is a little bit light for me, but I just apply like a heavy, like a darker highlighter to the skin, and it usually ends up being fine. So no harm, no foul. Tap off the excess on the back of my hand and then I just go and apply this to the high points of my cheeks just for a little glow now to set my face in place I'm going to take the raw um, from the earth press powder in the shade nude and I'm just going to press that into the skin with a dry beauty sponge I just press it anywhere that I've applied concealer, so in that triangle down the center of the face, around my nose as well. And I also like to kind of press it under where we applied that concealer, just under the cheekbones a bit. So it just really defines that area. And I find just pressing it into the skin helps that really lock in, um, stops the creasing going on on my face and stops the oil. Excuse me. And stops the oils seeping through on my forehead, T-zone area, all that kind of jazz. Just like an extra barrier for me. And then as a final touch, I'll just go in and just lightly dust any extra of that pressed powder over the rest of my face. And then before I go in with like the rest of like the bronzer and everything, I just like to go in and set my face with my Kat Von D Lock It Makeup Setting Mist. So I've quickly went ahead and done my brows. I can link above my brow routine for you guys if you'd like to check it out. But yeah, for now let's go on with the eyes. I'm thinking of doing something quite very feminine, girly, quite soft. That's my initial idea. I don't want to make it too long, so I think I might just kind of keep it simple. I won't be very technical with what I'm doing. I feel like every other like eye makeup look I've done, I've gone quite in depth with the steps that I'm going and doing. I'll keep it quite simple today just to make this video like you know, not 10 years long, <laughs> you know, so yeah, let me zoom you in. So I've already primed my lids with that concealer, I didn't set it in place with any powder. I'm just going to go in with the initial transition eyeshadow, and I think I might keep it pretty with, the, like, pretty much with the same palette today. I'm going to use the Jaclyn Hill Morphe one. So the initial shades I'm going to take are the two kind of transition shades from the palette, the Silk Cream and Made For Each Other shades. And I'm taking those on a 221 soft crease brush, starting from outer corner, working in. I have I got an idea of like keeping a more elongated eye today. I think that would look more flattering, especially on me. I feel like arm in shape eyes are just so sexy, so flattering. Everything you want in an eye look, so I'm not going to really round it out today. So taking that same 221 brush, I'm going to take a like deeper brown shade. I'm definitely going to keep this a neutral eye today, guys, for you. So I'm going to dip into this brown shade here called Butter, and I'm also going to mix that in with the shade next to it, Puta. I think these two browns are perfect to darken up the outer corner. Next, on a Luxe Soft Definer brush from Zoeva, I'm going to take a darker shade from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, and I'm thinking I'm going to take the shade Buns and mix it in with a bit of Roxanne. And again, starting from outer corner, blending whatever's left on the brush towards the inner corner. I think I'll do a cut crease today as well, like, just a little one. The more um, shades you use in this eye look, the more, like, 
seamless and smoky and blended it will actually look. If you're just going with a couple shades, it just doesn't look as smooth and as beautiful and as smoky. It looks a bit more choppier. Um, just because the more transition shades you have in there, the more soft the gradient is. I don't mind taking it out a little bit from my actual eye shape because I am going for that more almond eye shape. So I do want to kind of extend it out just a smidgen. And then taking butter and whatever the other shade was called, I can't quite remember. Those two previous shades, I'm just blending out the edges of Rexan and Buns, was it? With that um, same soft crease brush, not the definer that we just used. I want to go back in with that same brush that we applied it with before. And taking a bit of silk cream I made for each other on the very outer edges. So before I continue with any deeper browns, I'm going to cut the crease and apply the lid shade. So I'm just going to go in with an eye, con like eye concealer brush and some of my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. And I'm just carving it to about like two thirds of the way across. I don't ever really like to carve out the whole crease, especially if we're doing an elongated smoky eye. I feel like it would just round the eye too much. I just use my finger to blend out the edges so there's no harsh defined line. I like so. And while it's still quite tacky, I like to apply the lid shade. So I'm going to take Beam and just apply that to the inner third of my eye. So I'm just going in with the shade Shimmer Shimmer, which is this shimmery gorgeous champagne shade. So I just initially place it on with my finger and then like near the cut crease area I'll use like a more defined brush. But damn, that makeup geek. Oh, such pretty shade. I just like to really define that line right up against the cut crease. And I find this brush, this precise shader brush from Zoeva, just does the trick. And then just taking some of Roxanne and Buns again, I'm just kind of like defining up that outer portion of the eye. We'll go back and forth between Shimmer Shimmer and these two shades just so I get that perfect smooth gradient. I'm actually taking a bit of Roxanne and Buns on a pencil brush and just going up against that shimmer shimmer line. And like for the outer portion of the eye, I actually want to do like a smoky kind of liner. So I'm going to go in with... I'm going to take my Hayley Baldwin um, for Model Co. liquid liner and just kind of map out the shape initially. So I'm going to take my eye coal from Makeup Geek in the shade Obsidian as a black eye coal. I'm just going to smudge, like put a bit of that black on against the edges of the liner. And then I'm going to smudge that black coal out. And this is just like the shade Abyss. I'm just smoking out the edges of that coal liner that we kind of just filled in the black with. I'm actually going to mix Abyss with the shade Soda Pop. And then taking some of Mocha on a pencil brush. This one's from Gloss. And I'm just smoking out the Abyss and Soda Pop shade. I really feel like that Soda Pop shade did more than Abyss. I don't know it's my palette, but that Abyss shade is not doing much for me. And then just taking some of Shimmer Shimmer again and bringing it back where it needs to. And taking some of the liquid liner. This is from Milani. It's the Everlast liquid liner. And I'm just gonna redefine it up, like deepen it again, just on the outer corner. So I'm just gonna quickly repeat the process on the other eye. So for my inner corner and brow bone highlight today, I think I'm going to take and light from the Japan Hill Morphe palette just on a pencil brush. I'm just taking that transition brush at the beginning, just buff out any harsh lines or edges. So I'm actually going to finish off the eyes before I do my lashes and mascara and everything. I want to just kind of finish the eyeshadow off first. So I'm going to take my nude eye coal from Models Prefer and apply that to my bottom waterline. Then dipping into mocha, I'm going to define the outer part of my like bottom lash line with a precise shader brush.
make sure to connect it up to the outer part of the eye so there's no gap. And I want it to be heaviest on the outer portion of the eye and I'm just tapering it in about two thirds of the way across. Then taking some of Roxanne and Buns again, I'm going to buff out Mocha on a pencil brush. And I'm just buffing that out with those transition shades we used at the very beginning. I'm just kind of hugging the under eye area where the eye bags are. I even just add a bit of the shade Hunts as well because I want some of that burnt orange shade in there. So mascara, I'm going to go in with the Colossal Mascara from Maybelline. So I'm going to go in with the Temptress Wispy ones from House of Lashes. And well, these are the finished eyes. So to finish up the face, I'm going to bronze taking my NYX Contour and Highlight Kit and just taking those two kind of brown shades. I'm going to go in with my um, Chi Chi bronzer brush. So I'm just bronzing up, giving a bit of colour back to my dead looking skin. I like to kind of bring it onto the cheek area, just a little, just a little bit, under the chin as well, and jaw line slash neck. Now I'll take that like contoury coloured shade and really chisel out the cheekbones a little bit. I like to just brush it upwards a little bit, so like I chisel it out and then I just brush it upwards to fade it into the bronzer. For blush today, I'm taking Infatuation from Makeup Geek. Oh, it's such a stunning, like, what you call like a muted rosy tone. And I'm just going to apply that to the back part of my cheeks, the contour area. And for my face highlight today, I'm going to take Pure Soul from the Aspen Ovard Tarte Collaboration Palette. I actually prefer to do like a more softer hand with the highlight on my date night days. Just because I don't like having a stark bit of like shimmer or you know glitter or highlight, whatever it is, on my face. Just sitting there. I think it looks so much more flattering if it looks more like natural. I also apply it to the lips. This is probably not necessary because we're just going to cover it up with lipstick anyway, but... I think it shines through, you know. So for my lips today, I'm going to go nude. I think a pinky nude would really be quite flattering. I'm going to take my itty bitty lip liner from Rimmel, I think. Yeah, Rimmel. Um, I'm just going to line my lips with that. And I'm also going to fill them in as well. See, that highlight is like shining through. Oh, so pretty. And then what I'm going to do, I'm tossing. I'm not quite sure, but I'm... Tossing up between like Pale Plethora or Clear Message. I think, I think a brownie nude. I know I said I was going to go pinky, but I actually think a brownie nude because it is quite a neutral eye and we've used a lot of browns in there. So I think Clear Message will go well. And I actually like to keep it matte if I'm going out, like on a date or something, just because. I usually, we usually go like somewhere where we can eat or like if I'm going to kiss him or something. I don't want it to transfer and be all glossy and just go all over my face. So I prefer to use a matte. But it is up to you guys if you'd like to use a gloss for your date night. So this concludes today's makeup look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below before you leave so I, got, so I can see you guys in my upcoming tutorials. Also, leave a request of what you'd like to see as well in my next future videos like if you have any ideas or you know anything you want to actually um see just let me know like skincare what you know trying out a product what have you whatever it may be let me know down below and i'll be happy to you know do that for you guys otherwise i hope you have an amazing day i'll see you guys very very soon and i love you all so much bye